my choice of landscapes won't be hidden or secret for everybody. I am often bemused that landscape photographers often head for honeypots that are done to death, as if nothing else is worth considering. I get the fanciful impression that next time I go to, say, Cum Itwal in Snowdonia or Malum Cove in the Yorkshire Dales, I will have to join a queue first. A national park boundary is just an invisible arbitrary line on a map. Stepping outside that line does not mean that the scenery is second rate. This can be shown at Quantock's Head, the western end of the Quantock Hills, and if you have never heard of them, you are missing something. They are protected by their own Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty designation, and this is my first hidden landscape. Park at East Quantock's Head, and then follow the path to the beach for a surprise. It is marked on an Ordnance Survey map as a right of way. The retreating tide exposes wide expanses of intriguing rock shapes, a photographic godsend, distorted and buckled rocks fashioned by weathering over thousands of years. There are steps down to the beach, but watch where you tread, otherwise you could end up with a twisted ankle. I presented Tennyson down in my Isle of Wight photo walk, but for something quieter and a bit more level, follow the River Yar across the island using a disused railway line, not to be confused with the Freshwater Way, which takes a different route. The Yar almost divides the island in two. Its estuary is at Yarmouth, close to where the ferries arrive, and tidal as far as Freshwater Causeway, beyond which it becomes rather marshy and foggy. Incredibly, if the seawall at Freshwater Bay is breached, West White would be cut off from the rest of the island. On the way, look in at Freshwater Church and Yarmouth Castle. You need a dramatic sky for the fins. At St Ives I ended up with a lovely blue sky and a few cumulus clouds, but that was better than 100% cloud cover. Before leaving town I looked in at All Saints Church to admire its architecture. Then I walked from St Ives to Godmanchester. Not many hills. The path follows the river Great Ouse and is entirely level, but it is the villages that attract the eye. First, there is Hemingford Grey, then Hemingford Abbots, followed by Houghton Mill and Godmanchester, well known for its unique Chinese bridge. Kington may not be on everyone's hit list, except walkers doing Offersdyke Trail, the town serving as an overnight stop. I covered her guest ridge in another of my photo walks, but I couldn't leave it out here. Pop into St Mary's Church is on the way before ascending the ridge. At the far end of the ridge we enter Wales. It is just where the path divides. Liz, my companion when visiting Shropshire, took me to another hidden landscape on the Welsh border. Mitchell's fold, but the day was foul. We chose our time carefully. After all, Liz's car was not very far away, but already rain showers were speeding across the valley. When it cleared, and we didn't have long to wait, we enjoyed breathtaking views into the Vale of Montgomery. But I had to be quick if I wanted a decent shot, and it was freezing. Not all the stones have survived, and its history is unknown. Hrangothlan means International Eisteddfod. Another major attraction is the Heritage Steam Railway. 
cheek by jowl and somewhat unnoticed is Castathinus Bran, a ruined castle on top of its own hill. If beforehand you visit Plus Nueth, it is visible behind the classic view of the house. The climb to the top is steep but worth it, made easier by zigzagging the path. In addition to stunning views Langothlin Way, there are further stunning views towards World's End, an appropriate name after reaching the top out of breath. The castle ruins offer plenty of opportunities for the observant photographer, followed by a steep descent on the other side to a country lane and back into town. Hidden locations have hidden surprises. Alstwick in the Yorkshire Dales near Settle has a secret, but unlike Malham, not far away, it is not well known. Now, take Crummock Lane out from the village, and then a footpath across pastures towards the limestone cliffs at Napa Scar. As height is gained, glance back over the fields for the dry stone wall patterns. They are absolutely fascinating, but the biggest surprise still awaits. Upon reaching a plateau, we are greeted by a landscape strewn with boulders, several perilously perched on plinths, a sight so unbelievable that it would be easy to assume that someone had been around with a JCB. No. During the last ice age, rocks from further up the valley were transported by ice to be left on softer limestone, which has worn away, leaving them prick carelessly balanced on these slender pillars. Whilst I have tried to avoid national parks, and I have included a couple, it is satisfying to find a secluded landscape amidst one of the busiest honeypots in the lakes. Grasmere is in that category, and whilst walkers may try the Easdale Road out of the village for Easdale Tarn, looking perhaps for something a bit more peaceful, another track branches towards Far Easdale, which lives up to the romantic impression of its name. This valley is remote and if continued to the far end, there is an immense feeling of satisfaction upon reaching the heights near Sergeant Man, one of many names given to the fells. The views are breathtaking and include Fairfield and Coniston Old Man. Travelling north by train from Berwick-upon-Tweed, you get a tantalising glimpse of the Scottish coast. From Berwick, take a bus to Eyemouth, worth a visit in its own right, and then St Abbs before an exhilarating walk to the headland. After passing the lighthouse, the views are amazing and certainly do not disappoint, with, of course, the right sort of sun. Loch Leven, south of Fort William, is not exactly a hidden landscape, but the bit I will show could be unfamiliar. Commencing at the old causeway at North Balahulish, take the path following the lake shore. It goes around the HF Hotel and may be thought to be private. I have stayed at the hotel several times and have often seen local people using the path. Now this is one of the best views of the Pap of Glencoe, perfect for sunrise and sunset shots in all weathers, 
nurtured by the distant mountains. When I led photographic holidays for HF, this view was mandatory. You may encounter another group today, but it won't be me leading as I have retired. But the views, yes, they continue to linger in the memory.